goodness. We're going uh, live in a few. It's loading. Here we go. Here we go. We are live. It's loading. Here we go. Cars, are we good? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Welcome and good evening, Facebook land, Facebook family. I'm so excited. Y'all just don't know. I've been on pins and needles this whole month. I've probably driven all of these wonderful couples crazy uh, with my postings, but you know, you know how I do. I want everybody to partake in this wonderful experience that uh, we are starting out this year with, and um, a lot of things have been in the media. So it's only God that could orchestrate this conversation for right now. I think it's definitely an in-season conversation that we all need to have about longevity and how do we keep that music playing? You know, playing on the same record, not two record players, but one record player and one song, okay? So um, as we always, um, I'm going to introduce our couples, let them have, you know, a little say if they desire, and then we're just going to jump right in. The reason why we're coming in early is because you're talking about 140 years of experience on here. We're going to need some extra time to delve in deep, right? So if you right. have questions, we do have my, my wonderful assistant, uh, Minister Torres uh, Porter, who is monitoring the chat. So if you have questions, she's going to be able to send those questions to me, and we're going to get some answers to your questions. And even if you have questions later, inbox me. I'll send it out, or you see these lovely names, inbox them. I'm sure they will have no problem with speaking with you about whatever the concern or issue is. And again, we're coming from a Christian perspective. We're, we're coming from a biblical perspective. All of these couples are Christian, godly couples um, who um, believe in that one faith, one baptism. So we're not here to offend anybody. We're just coming with the knowledge and understanding from our perspective. And, and that's about it. So as always, uh, you know that I'm pulling from my book, His Bride. It's on um, amazon.com if you want the ebook version, if you want a hardcover version that looks like this and it, it, it gets packaged so pretty. Um, please just go to my website at uh, kinaarnold.com. Taurus will put that in the chat and um, you can receive your copy. So where we're coming from today is chapter eight. Um, and that chapter is about the covenant relationship that he and I experienced <laughs> together and what that meant to me, what that meant to him, and how those meanings came together. So one of the, the scripture that I led with is not wrestling against blood, but against principality, okay? Um, not getting all deep and scriptural with it, but the whole point is when you come and join in a relationship with somebody and you join as one flesh and one body, you're going to be wrestling with some things. There's some things that it's not even about compromise. It's about things you got to let go of. It's real simple. And I'm just going to put it plain. You know, that single girl mentality had to be put to the side. That, <laughs> look at his face. You starting already. Okay, we try to be nice the people uh, but I mean, we gonna talk about it <laughs> george see see listen i got you bro hold, hold that dog we are not see pastor did you get your anointing oil out pastor please can you just it's, it's it. close if you need it it's close <laughs> even got here yet but mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that mentality, that thought process of how you think about life and how, and those glasses you look through, you've got to let it go. It's not even about a compromise. And I know people are like, oh, you need to compromise. No, there's some things you just got to cut, mend it up, and it's gone because you no longer are a single-minded person. And that was my issue. You know, we're going to call it pride. We're going to call it, I was 40. I done bought a house. I done been out of the country. I done sang out of the country. I done talked out of the country. I done done some things. I'm a lawyer. I done, you know, I'm educated. I got all them things going on. And what you not going to do, right back, <laughs> is ask me where I am. Ooh. Excuse me? <laughs> um, hello? 
<laughs> Excuse me, you want to ask me that question again? And it was out of care and concern, but how I received it was you dapping into my business because I'm I, I'm grown. But that had to be cut off and let go of. So I'm just speaking from my perspective of some things you've got to let go of, and there's no way around it. So we're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about how when you're in covenant with someone, covenant is different to me. In, in our panel, we'll talk about it. Covenant is different to me than saying I'm having a wedding. A wedding to me is the all white party. You're the center of attention. He's the center of attention. Everybody's there to, to you know, love on you and give you well wishes. The covenant part, it begins way before you stand up there and say, I do. Why? Because the whole process leading up to that should have you, me, and God. You, me, and the Trinity in the mix of it. So by the time you get there, it's like easy breezy. It's not, oh no, I'm married. Uh-oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. It's like a whole list of I can't do's. Instead of, oh my gosh, it's such a wonderful relationship that that's coming up. And now our first son is whining because I'm talking on Zoom. Yeah, so that's who, you, you know, he's my first son. Anyway, then my baby. Uh, <laughs> so that's, that's my perspective. And so that's what we chose to do in the beginning. That it was me, him, and God. It wasn't me and him. And then, we, then when we say I do, then there's God, Holy Spirit, and, the, you know, and Jesus. And then, and then. It had to begin early. And that's how you remain chaste. Come on, somebody. We're going to talk about it. That's how you remain chaste, not having sex. Take your children out the room, not, not doing anything that would compromise your relationship with God as an individual. So when you come together, your relationship with God as a, as a, as a couple is not compromised either. Right. So those are some of the things that I want to put out there to the panel and um, anybody, you don't have to raise your hand. You just jump on in. Um, any of those topics any of those covenant things that you want to express of how you have kept the music playing. Now, of course, we have the quotes at the bottom of your flyers, right? We have those quotes. And those that's just a snippet of how they've kept the music playing. But you all are welcome to expound on it. So first on my left, we have Terrence and Regina. You see that he's by himself. That's because his his uh, lovely wife, Regina, is on a conference call that she couldn't get out of, and that's okay. He's going to hold up the bloodstained banner for the Stevenson Kingdom. Then we have George and Tanya Warmly, um, who's in my right corner here. And we have Pastor Phil and Lady Vondra Tiver. Um, And we also have Michael and Kimberly Brown. And you know we have our trusted, honest, Lord Jesus, you know, have your band-aids ready. Our honest and transparent therapist, Dr. Sherilyn Garrett and Khalid Scott. Khalid Scott. I always say Khalid, but it's Khalid Scott. And so um, I'm awesomely blessed to have each one of you here. Um, I have relationship, individual relationship with all of these couples. I have been able to see their fruit. I have partake, uh, partook if you want to say it that way, of their fruit, even without them knowing. Because as a young couple, we're almost 12, but you're talking 20 plus on here. And a total, including Dr. Sherilyn Garrett, I've added you in, in the number, you're talking about 140 years of marriage experience, of covenant experience on this line. Where can you find that in one place that is willing to, talk about some stuff, pitfalls and valleys and streams. So I'll open it up to the panel with that one question that we started out in our flyers and everything. How have you kept this beautiful music playing 20 plus years and beyond? Anybody can start, go for it. Don't all speak at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess we can we can kick it off. My wife and I, uh, 
this, excuse me, this year celebrated 37, 36. I keep jumping a year ahead. There's 36 years of marriage. And uh, we, uh, it's funny, I was just sharing with her as we were preparing and kind of thinking about what we were sharing. Now, first of all, good evening to the, to the panel, good evening to everyone, and good evening to your, your viewers on Facebook and those that are here on Zoom. Uh, I'm sitting next to my lovely bride, as I said, Vanka, of uh, 36 years. We are five kids and five grandkids into this thing. The Lord has blessed us in a great, great way. Uh, and I thank Dr. Keena and Gino, always good to see you, bro. Yeah. Bless you, man. Um, it, uh, Dr. Keena's subject is really, really key nowadays, especially talking about not just marriage, but covenant in marriage. And Keena, something popped up in my spirit while you were just sharing. I'm not going to get too deep, but I'll just say it just kind of came up. Um, covenant isn't covenant until it's tested. Mm. We can say mm -hmm. covenant, but until that, that relationship, is tested, then you know you're really in covenant. And certainly yeah. my wife and I, we well, probably need about four or five hours of we talk about all the stuff we've been through in 36 years. But our, our marriage certainly has been tested. But I want my wife to just start off by sharing, as I was thinking about today, what was on. We all got married. We all went through the wedding process, had the uh, probably had the, uh, the wedding party and that sort of thing, uh, the bridal shower and all that kind of thing. And so my wife and I, as we were getting together, she's going to share with you what was on our invitations and on our flyers for the wedding. We actually, from 36 years ago, still have this piece of history in, in our marriage. So, honey, awesome. you know. Wow, God bless you, everyone. It's an honor to um, be here. And um, I was just listening to Dr. Keena talk about covenant and everything. And I was just thinking about how, um, you know, when we teach marriage, we teach that there's a difference between covenant and agreement. Mm. And so, you know, with covenant, it's just like, it, it can't be broken. And agreement is like, I sign and if you go this way, then we're going to do this. If you go this way, then we're going to do this. But with the covenant, it's something that's not, it cannot be broken. You know, it's knitted together. And so I was just thinking and laughing about you, you talking about some of you guys' experiences. And so there's a lot that we can share, but as my husband said, we was looking at the theme that you had about keeping, you know, staying together, the music playing. The music playing. Mm -hmm. And so what we made our vows to at the beginning was, let this be our destiny to share our lives together so that we may with one voice, one glorify voice. God. So this, is an, <laughs> this is the actual program and invitation for my wedding. Uh, and it was just, and we were young kids. We weren't spiritual. We weren't deep. We weren't, okay, we're going to get in God's face and God's going to give us. No. We just weren't like that. I just say this real quick, and then we'll kick out to another couple. It's nowadays, it's really kind of interesting to me that uh, kids nowadays get married, and they're looking for all these preliminaries. Back in the day, my wife and I get, got married just because we love one another, and we wanted to be together. So it wasn't about what you had and what you could do and what you didn't have, what you couldn't do. We simply just got married just because we were in love, and we decided we wanted to share our lives together. So that happened to be our thing. Let us with one voice, boy, mm -hmm. glorify God. And so, and I just said, it's mighty funny that Keenan would pick this subject here. We'll uh, pass on the batons here. The fact that uh, I've been involved, I've been involved in music all of my life. But uh, when I met my wife, that's when my actual formal music career started. The year oh. we got married. And so now we're going on 40 years of being in music and being involved with music. And that sort of thing. And I said, you just been, you married a music, married into a musical family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and music has been in our lives. And so we've been, we've been able to keep the music playing in spite of challenges, circumstances, and situations because we decided with one voice to glorify oh, God. God. And it's that uh, when you think about keep, keeping the music playing, and King, you talked about uh, different things that come up in the marriage. I have this one incident I'm going to talk about. <laughs> What is that? Well, come on, wait. Oh, <laughs> George, start praying. Wait, did the audience have their paper and their pen? Right. <laughs> covenant is not covenant until it's tested. Did you write down this? <laughs> Go ahead. Go so you talking about a test. <laughs> so we had this one incident where, okay, I have my own place. I'm going to make it real oh, short. And my husband goes to work and he comes home from work and he's sad. He comes into the living room, take off his shoes, 
And and he didn't work in my cold, work in, what, what factory at that he time, worked at yeah. a factory at that mm -hmm. time. He would come in, take off his shoes, take off his coat, put it on the couch, oh, and just sit yeah. down, you know, right there. And I'm constantly fussing about why are you coming in and taking off your shoes and, and putting them, you know, putting your coat on the couch. And you know, I'm thinking how I had the place before we got married, and he keep doing it and he keep doing it. And so, you know, we just got into this argument about some things and and I was just like fed up with it. And I was like, you know what? This is my place. When you start talking about you have to humble yourself <laughs> and not be in pride. I'm like, this is my place. This is the way I want it. So that one word, my had to change, I realized. It. But I told him, I said, well, you do what you want to do. So he got ready to leave out the house. And I heard the Lord say to me, because by then I'm saved, okay? I'm saved now. <laughs> uh, I heard the Lord say, that's not what you really want him to do. And I began to think, yeah, because if something happened to him, I don't know what I do. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, if I left, I left out something. So around. we had an argument. And so I said, I said, don't leave. I don't want you to leave because I don't want anything to happen to you. Let's just do this. You go to your room. I'm going to go in the kitchen and we'll figure this out. Let's talk about this so we can come, bring our voices down. And that's what we learned to bring our voices to a certain level in conversation. Because if we were hollering or screaming, we would not be able to hear each other anyway. And so he went to the room. I went to the kitchen. But I went to the kitchen and started washing the dishes. And I was like banging up, making all kind of noise while I'm washing the dishes. He goes to the bedroom. He has a red guitar. He takes this red guitar and he starts strumming on it like he, I mean, really strumming hard, like he's playing rock. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden the rock music gets soft. And it starts, you know, he starts playing it a little softer, a little softer. He really starts playing it. And I start washing the dishes. And I start feeling, I guess, presence, and I wasn't clicking the dishes or banging them or, you know, angry anymore. And it got quiet and peaceful. And I think I began to pray. And as I began to pray, the Lord told me, just do what you would like for it to be. So I'll start when he come in and he would go to the couch and take off his shoes, take off his coat. Then I become a servant. And I began to take his shoes and put him in the closet and I began to take his coat and politely hang it in his closet. And I did this for a couple of days and all of a sudden, the Lord just did it for me. Cause I guess he saw what I liked. And he came in, went to the closet, put his shoes in the closet and hung his coat up. <laughs> and I said to myself, prayer and music works very well. <laughs> Listen. The socks on the floor. Didn't nobody tell me that the socks be where they left. And so, man, man, I, man, man. <laughs> and so I started doing, and I still do, the socks still remain where they are. That's just how he do, even in his retirement. But I picks up the socks where I want them to be, in the hamper. And, and, and it's a non, it's a non-issue. I'm not going to make an issue out of something. No, See, no, there's no. a nugget. Did y'all get that nugget? Don't make issues out of something. Out of, issue, out of the little bitty things. Little they bitty things. Come on with the nuggets. Come on. And after a while, they, you know, they see what you like, what you desire, how you want it to be. And mm -hmm. you just begin to do it himself, and it just worked out. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Kim, Kim, I feel, I feel an unction over there. Come on, Kim. Off you go ahead. I love that story. I absolutely love that story. And um, Michael and I have been married for 23 years. And I just say, thank you, Lord. 24. It'll be 24 this year. And I can only say, thank you, Lord. Um, our parents were both married. We chose to be married in November because our parents were both married in November. And Michael father we say I say it was an arranged marriage because Michael's father or stepfather uh, met me first and said that I was going to be his daughter-in-law uh -huh. and before Michael had ever met me and um, <laughs> Michael I don't know how he felt about that at that time <laughs> he didn't feel very well about it but later on he appreciated it yes, um, yes. he did then there are days now that sometimes I don't think he appreciates it <laughs> when he's not happy with me. But um, one thing I will say, I really like the fact when you talk about music and dance, first of all, 
Um, I absolutely love dance and I lead the dance ministry in my church. And um, I love dance, but Michael does not. He's not a dancer. So at our wedding, I was all excited about, you know, we're going to do this great formal dance. And you know, in my mind, you know, you talk about the wedding. The wedding is for both of you, right? It's not my wedding. It's our wedding. No, it just felt like your wedding. But yeah, when we were going through the planning, it became my wedding. Yes. And yeah. so when we got to the dance, and Michael was very, very laid back. And he was just like, whatever you want. He just kept saying, whatever you want. And his mom at times would put the brakes on me. But Michael would say, mom, whatever she wants until the dance. That's when he said, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> we you can gotta, do You got to pick your bottle, pick your, pick your bottle and pick your spots. Yeah. And I didn't know that he was not a dancer. And he gave me this story about, you know, being in school and that when he gets up, he just starts thinking about the steps. And usually that's when things don't go so well because he thinks about what step is next. Whereas for me, being a dancer, it just comes. And I said, you can't think about it. So we tried practicing at home before I was going to hire somebody to teach us this extravagant dance. And I realized this was causing him way too much anxiety. I realized it wasn't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, but you were cool, though. You was a cool girl. Yeah. But we, we got there and we came to the dance. I said, no, we, we're, we will do the dance the way you want to do this Keep dance. This and we did side to side. And it, even with that, the basic dance that we did was not basic to him because it was still a lot of anxiety for him. Too much and, and I just said, I just want you to relax and enjoy this. And even when we were dancing, he was like, you just want me to relax, right? I just need to relax. Like he was talking it out. And I was like, honey, you're not relaxing because you're still talking about it. But as soon as it was over, he was so glad that that dance was over. <laughs> so. You look good, Michael, though. You look good. Well, I faked it real good. Yeah. <laughs> you faked it real good. Anyone else? Terrence? Um, George? It's, it's, it, I'll jump in. It's funny that uh, you all talk about music. Uh, I actually joined the University of Illinois Black Chorus to meet my wife. Uh, couldn't sing a lick. And apparently their admission standards were really low because they let me <laughs> join. Um, but this whole thing about dancing and music, you got to know what you're good at and, 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 and play your role. Um, when it comes to, we have three children. We've got a senior in, I mean, a junior in high school, a freshman in high school, and a fourth grader. And when it comes to like the academic stuff, that's my wife. That's her lane, and she does it well. So she's able to help them think through things logically and process things logically. Uh, but when it comes to the emotional stuff, the relational stuff, the communication pieces. That's my lane and that's how God has built our relationship. And so we try to stay in our lane. I don't try to, the time I helped my children with their homework and they came home with it all marked up red and I got offended and was ready to go up to the school and tell them a thing or two because you don't have to do all of them boxes and stuff to do regular addition. It just didn't make sense to me. Um, but my wife was trying to help them with this new math and she was a, wasn't available. and. Man, I got a, I got all in my feelings. Had to humble myself and uh, process some things. Um, but knowing, I think that's the thing that um, is one of the hallmarks of, of our 22 years is the fact that we just know our lane. Like I don't, I don't get offended because she's better at dealing with money than I am, or she doesn't get offended that I'm better at relationships than she is. It's over time we've learned through trial and error, good days, not so good days. There's some days when I know she loves me, but I know she don't like me. It happens. And so um, we, we, through trial and error, we've figured out what our lane is and 
we we play our role. We just play our role. I'll never forget uh, the first big argument we had was over paint color. And I remember we were we were at it like wind in the jaws, tight, just tense, you know, way before children. And I remember going outside in the garage because that's what my dad would do when him and my mama got into it. Uh, he would go out in the garage and he'd look up in the rafters and he'd count the number of rafters in, in the garage and he would bring me out there with him and we that's how he would decompress and calm down. I didn't know that until I got married. And so I called him and he said, he said two things to me. He said, son, is this the hill you want to die on? I said, well, in the grand scheme of things, the paint color really ain't that big of a deal. And then he said to me, well, you picked her. And he hung up the phone. And I knew several things from that conversation. Not to call my daddy no more when we got into it. But then I also realized that I made some choices. To the, I, I chose to enter this relationship. And as a result of the choices that I've made, uh, there's commitment that comes along with those choices. Uh, researchers estimate we make anywhere between 35 and 50,000 individual choices each and every day. And so as a result, we've chosen what we're going to wear, where we're going to sit, what we're going to eat, who we're going to be in relationship with. All those things are choices and covenant ultimately boils down to choice. It is, I choose to be in this relationship and I choose to do what's necessary to maintain and sustain this relationship. If that means I gotta take a step back and process my pride, process my, my, my whatever, that's what that means. And, and so I think ultimately it all boils down to choice. Do that choice thing. You know, we made a choice of the wedding gown. We made a choice of what kind of flowers, we made a choice of the invitation. We made a choice, you know, what colors we were wearing. But then after that, somehow in, in relationships, in marriages and in covenant relationships, we forgot about that initial choice. We chose to make those vows, whether you change the vows from the traditional vows to some special vows or whatever kind of vows, you took vows. <laughs> you said right. something at the altar in front of 200, 300, 400, whatever, one person, you know, and, and that means something. And that's yeah. so essential, Terrence. That was, that was, yeah, them some nuggets. I done wrote them down. Go ahead, George and Tanya, give us some nuggets. Come on. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, enjoying everything that everyone has said. Uh, me and Tanya both have been together also 36 years. Uh, actually, we're going to do the flip side, uh, Pastor <laughs> Phil. Didn't know much about church. Met Tanya through a strange conversation. I'm at my brother's house, laying in the bed. She's talking to my other brother on the phone. So after this, my other brother introduces me to Tanya. So she thought I was the one that was on the phone, but it happened <laughs> to be me. So mm -hmm. from that point on, we we started dating. I went out to see her, and then I've been with her ever since. So like I said, we've been together for twenty years. Uh, we dated for that twenty years because, like I said, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I knew of the Word, but I was not a church person. I was living. I was doing me and uh, having a good time. But like I said, somehow or another, she ended up getting into my good time. So as of after that. God was funny to me. He gave me a vision of Tanya and uh, she was going through some things. So I don't know how my brother knew what he knew or how we got together when we got together. But along that way, she explained to me what had taken place. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I saw this, I saw this. And from that point for me, I knew I was supposed to be there with her mm -hmm. because also in that dream, I was protecting Daniel and she heard my voice. So 
we've been, I, I, how, how some people say, she's been bone of my bone. She is the opposite of me, okay? Because I tell people how it is and how I feel. I don't hold back. But at the same time, like you said, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but I'm being me. And that's just how I was raised. And she's total opposite. She wants to, oh, no, no, no. I, I don't do it like that. You know what I mean? Let, let's keep it real. Tell people how you feel. And, and that way you don't have to come back and trip over a lot. And, and I think that's what built through that 20 years of just learning each other, feeling each other, seeing what she liked, didn't like, noticing everything, paying attention. But like I said, didn't know that God had a plan. And it brings us to the 43 years, but I'm gonna let you tell her version of <laughs> how we <laughs> got to version. where it is. It was, that's to me yeah. was your God yeah. love because in there came the good times along with the bad times. Okay. A lot of times I didn't like her. A lot of times I didn't want to drive to Joliet to see her, but I came anyway. A lot of times I walked on the highway because I didn't uh -huh. believe in staying at a woman's house. You know what I mean? I had values that my parents brought me up on. And it was just certain things that I just wouldn't do. You know, so, but like I said, and, and through all of that, I found out that I really loved her. You know what I mean? And I wanted to be with her. And like you said, you know, fellas at the top, whatever choice that I had to make to keep it that way, I made that choice. Mm -hmm. Just like you too. You had opportunities to make the vow. I had an opportunity to take the woman to the courthouse that I wanted to be with. I didn't propose. I didn't do all that fancy stuff. I say, do you want to marry me after the 20 years? She wow. said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where we stand today. Mm -hmm. So I don't mm -hmm. care what anyone else says. You dig in, you go tight, you do whatever mm -hmm. is necessary. You bend, you break, mm -hmm. you put each other back together, yeah. you hold each other up. Okay. And that's how we get to the 43 years because there's still more to come. Yeah. yeah. And, and I awesome. think we've been prepared for it. So, okay. George, I didn't know you were going to take me to the tears. I didn't know, but man, a man that's going to walk on the highway. Did, did, you, did you catch that? He walked on the highway. And for those, you know, Kim and Michael are not, not in Chicago. I think everybody else is from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Joliet in a car is 40 minutes. Yes. I, I'm just going to leave my, in a car is 40 minutes. Can you imagine walking? what you say, George? 6 a.m. in the morning. Man, go ahead, Tanya. I'm stuck. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know what to <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. Is, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we didn't. We have we grown, grown together. Um, I thank God for Him. Um, standing through trials, um, being able to love even um, those uh, hard, hard places and hard things that we've been put situations we've been put in. Um, God able us to get through that. So I think, um, just thank God for that prayer um, and fasting and having um, someone to talk with, having a counsel, good counsel. Um, thank God for Pastor uh, Larry B. Tyler. <laughs> um, he is awesome. Um, they did a lot of counseling for us. So I thank God, uh, God for him. So counseling, really helps to keep the keep the music going keep yes. the dancing going keep yes. the music playing um so yeah you have to have a good counsel um so we i mean we would be on this 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 live for a long long time um i agree with pastor phil and lady vondra if we you know told the stories and things that we have been through that kept us going but through it all we've grown we've grown um, and like George said, God, he's not yet done. So there's still things that God wants to do, still things that, you know, he may, situations we may get put in, but we grow, grow through it all. Um, so I thank God for the 20 years of, and, and I know that was God ordained. We didn't do things 
uh, the, the beautiful wedding and, and getting the dress. I never had a wedding. Um, never able to get the dress and have the bridesmaids and, and all that fancy stuff. But I, I wouldn't take it for nothing. I would take it away for nothing because it's made us who we are who we are. Um, so I thank God for that. So um, what I would tell someone um, that's newly getting married is communicate, um, grow, grow, be willing to grow, be willing to uh, go through some hurtful times, be willing to go through some hurtful times and some hard times and some struggles. Um, but no, when you look back on it, the, the only way you're going to make it through is with the Lord on your side, my God. Um, so just, uh, so yeah, that's what I would have to say. That's how you keep the music playing. Amen. <laughs> uh, that, that is so interesting. And because, I mean, I've known Tanya and George, but I've never heard their beginning story. And George, I don't know if you're aware, but Gino had the same story with me that you want to tell them. Oh, yeah. You know what? <laughs> oh, I want to say this right quick. That was a beautiful story. Uh, uh, you know, when you said that y'all didn't even have a wedding, no, I was just telling Kenan we could have saved a lot of money. They got all these years, they didn't even have a wedding. So, um, also, no, 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 I'm just joking, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm always gonna say something. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so you gotta have fun, that's how you get there, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. But you know what? The, 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 now, what happened with uh, me meeting Kena? I know I had a friend of mine. We had a mutual friend. I was telling me about Kena for five years before I even met her, and um, she kept saying, "I got somebody I want you to meet. I think y'all be perfect." This, that, this, that. And I'm like, "Yeah, okay, whatever, whatever." So um, at this time, I've been praying. I've been standing before God and. I've been uh, going before God again and, and, and constantly, you know, going before God again and years has been passing and I was going before God and saying, you forgot about me and, you know, I'm going to go pick my own wife, you know, going through all of that stuff. So um, finally, I had a chance to meet. I'm just going to cut the story a little short. But before I got a chance to meet, I know God told me that your wife is going to be damaged goods. And... I didn't understand what he when he had spoke that to me one day, and I didn't understand it. And um, I know she told you the story about what you know is all in the book what she went through beforehand. So finally, um, when I met her, and wasn't even thinking about because I just went through some craziness myself. When I met Ken, I was not thinking about this is the one who I was supposed to meet and this is one I'm gonna try to date. No, I wasn't even thinking about that at all. At the time, I was so upset because I went through some craziness. I didn't want to be bothered. So um, she was on the same level as well. So when we did meet, um, I just talked to her as a friend. Mm -hmm. And that was it. That was all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we exchanged numbers and talked to her a couple of times on the phone. And one day I was sitting up and uh, when she was going through a thing and just kind of snapping off at the time. And I'm looking at the phone like, who is she talking to? You know, just going through a thing. And mm -hmm. I decided, I said, okay, well, I said, God, you know, everybody's in your life for a reason. You know, what is her purpose in my life? And when he spoke it to me and said, hey, this is your wife. The first thing I thought about because of what I was experiencing with her, it was like, no, that, that ain't God. That nope. ain't, I did not hear that. This lady is crazy. This is <laughs> not my wife. So, um, <laughs> When he's telling me, you know, I told you your wife was going to be damaged goods. That's when it clicked. And I'm like, wow, okay, all right. But through it all, beforehand, um, I mean, even with the wedding ring, even with um, just different Everything. things, your conversations, arguments that we had, uh, God would speak to me and let me know how they was going to end up. And it ended up exactly that same way. He was confirming to me that without a shadow of a doubt, this is your wife. This is who I told you to be with. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand now that when God really confirms something, constantly confirms something, when you come to that thing, 
Um, it could be some challenges there, but you can hold on to his word from that point. Because when we got together, we were so opposite. Mm. You know, we even looked at each other like, okay, what was God thinking of? Did we really hear this? Know. You know, know, just totally opposite. I don't understand. The only that. thing we can agree on was Jesus is Lord. <laughs> That's the only thing. And everything else was argument. Everything else was a disagreement. He don't want to dance. No, I got to pass with that. But anyway, um, but as time went on, <laughs> as time went on, um, God has blessed us mm -hmm. to be able to meet right in the middle with a lot of things. Yeah. Um, we still totally different, but we kind of even each other out. We could kind of yeah. see it now. Yeah. You know, um, me, I'm the, I'm the jokester and she's always so serious. And I mean, to the point of, I mean, you all know, well, you all know her for some years, so you all know. She could be so serious that it is just, you know, I, I, we ain't gonna go there, but the, the, the joking part kind of even things out, mm -hmm. you know, and she is so on top of things, far as business-wise and doing things, and I'm kind of laid back. Yeah. So sometimes I just lay way back in, in time in the past, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's right. We're supposed to do that. Well, she's right on top of that. So that yeah. kind of evens me out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, a, a, you know, and there's a lot of different things on how that works out, but we can, can see, we can really see now what God is doing. Yeah. So it's, it's a blessing, but I left out quite a bit for the sake of time, but it, it was real deep. Yeah. <laughs> now I wanted to know if our therapist wanted to jump, jump in on any of this. I see Khalid uh, got that beard going, uh, Dr. Gary. Got that beard going. I think Kim, Kim, you wanted to say something real quick. Oh, Michael wanted to say something. Go ahead, Michael. My story is very, very similar to you all. I had just come out of some really crazy relationships and was totally burned out. And I'm thinking, the last thing I want to do yes. is be involved in a relationship. Yeah. So I was not looking at all. I, I'll never forget it. It was on a Sunday afternoon, and my stepdad worked part-time at the store where Kim was doing some fragrance mine. And so he comes home with this slip of paper and comes towards me, and I'm like, what is this? I've got a number for you. You need to give her a call. I'm watching the NFL, a huge football fan. I'm like, man, I don't, I don't want to call anybody, but... I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I took the number. Kept watching football. He comes back probably 35, 40 minutes later. Have you called yet? No, I'm, I'm not called her yet. I, I'll, I'll get around to it. Another 45 minutes or hour goes by. Are you going to call her? Are you going to call her? I'm like, fine. I will <laughs> give her a call just to get this over with. Not with the rolled eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm thinking, <laughs> this is going to be a disaster. I'm not interested. Called her. And I think we talked. And I'm not a big talker. We talked for probably four hours right off the bat. Wow. It, it, it just clicked. And something else you guys were saying is very similar. Our personalities are 180 degrees opposite. different. <laughs> but but, but, but it, it, in many respects, it works. <laughs> Because like he was just saying, we compliment one another in that way. Um, a perfect That's example. So serious. And, 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 <laughs> well, I'll give you a perfect example. I grew up in a household. My mom, in some way, in this respect, was a lot like him. She was a night owl. I always grew up very regimented, go to bed at a certain time, get up in the morning, morning person. And many times, my mom's a school teacher, and I actually saved her. <laughs> or being late because I would wake up in the morning. Well, little did I know, I was going to marry somebody who is a night owl and who is not a morning person. So when we got married and had kids, well, in the morning, you got early morning dudes. Breakfast, get them dressed, get them off <laughs> to school. That's me. I, I, I do that. And I know uh, some guys are like, well, why, why, why are you having to do that? But it, it just comes natural, and we compliment one another that way. Why should I get bent out of shape about doing this? God designed me that way. I'm a morning person. We're together. She's not. We compliment one another in that respect. 
Yeah. So it, it works out great. Now I will do lunch because I want their lunch to look a certain way. Yeah. And I will do clothes because I want their clothes to match and I want their outfits to look a certain way. So when they were growing up and they were little, I had the outfits and I had the lunch ready. So in paper signed and backpacks packed. But if that schedule was off, everything didn't go well. And Michael is very much the whole, and, and we struggled in this in the beginning was that routine like I'm free flowing and just, you know, we don't have to have a plan. If we're going to go on a trip, I don't need a plan. He's got to have a plan. And mm-hmm. the first time we were traveling together and there was no plan, he was going crazy. He was in the hotel trying to put a plan together. You don't have a plan. You don't know what we're doing. You don't know how we're going to get there. You know, he's mapping stuff out. And I'm just like, we're on vacation, babe. Let's just be relaxed and just go with the flow. Go with the flow. We don't even know what we're gonna eat. Like you know, you don't even know where, where we're. Where we're, where we're <laughs> and I mean, he's getting mad. You're messing up this whole trip. You planned up. So now, I know. So I'm like, okay, these are your duties, and he's happy with that. When we go somewhere, he's mapped it out. He knows where we're gonna eat. He's uh, planned all that. I plan in the outfits making sure I got his outfit ready. I've got the kids out. I've got our snacks. I've got all that good stuff ready. Um, I, and it's very non-traditional. I will even pack the car because I know how I like things packed. And so other people can look at our lives and be like, oh my gosh, something's wrong here. You know, Michael's this big guy. He's got Kim over there doing all that work. He doesn't. This is me. This is what I want to do. When we were, when we were pregnant, I know how I like the yard mowed. Sometimes I would get out there and I would mow the front yard and I was big and pregnant and Michael would drive up and see me. He would jump out the car almost when it was running, like, get up, stop. You're making me look bad. The neighbors are looking at you. I think I've got you out there for the yard. And I was huge. I'm like, no, I can't take it. I told you to mow the yard yesterday and I want it done the way I want it done. And he's like, you got to stop. This is ridiculous. And he would call my parents and have my parents to talk to me. And my dad saying, don't you be back out there in that yard. This is ridiculous. A woman cannot mow a yard. So it's not always traditional for us, but it works. I mean, we, we compliment one another. You would think with me being the attorney, I would be the, I guess, blunt person who speaks up and speaks his mind and is very direct. And, and, and I can do that in, in, right. in a professional setting when I've got to do it, but that's not my natural instinct. You would think in our household, Kim would be the attorney and advocate, but we balance one another out. Yeah. When, we, when we first met, Kim was of the mindset, just say whatever you want to say, no matter what the context was. And if I'm right, I'm right. And, and, and I should be able to say it. And I had to, Kim, in a professional setting, you're new. You yeah. just got here. You can't rock the boat. You kind of got to be seen and not heard until you earn your stripes, so to speak. And then you can start to speak up more. And I've helped to bounce her out that way. Absolutely. She, she's helped me. I'll procrastinate. Yeah. I, I can, because of my analytical, I'm thinking about every possibility. Right. I need a paralysis by analysis. <laughs> and she'll just kind of kick me. Look, you got to see, you got to go. We got to do this, we got to do that. And I get so frustrated with it. But truth be, I mean, she's being truthful and, and it, it works. So I think it's all about knowing each other. Knowing, you know, and being honest with yourself, this right. is something that I'm I'm struggled with. I may be weak in, and okay. she can help me with that, and vice versa. And over the 23, 24 years, we've learned how to to make it work by we compliment one another. And and usually our friends who are married who struggled in marriage, and some of them have, are now divorced um, or contemplating it, would ask, "How do you stay married?" Especially his friends who are in legal fields. And I will say, well, you know, he's an attorney, so he divorces me every day. 
but he just never signs the papers. So, and I will never sign the papers. So, you know, we, we believe in God, we trust God and we love God. So therefore, you know, every day that he's saying, this is it, I'm done with you. I'm like, okay, I'm done with you too. I'll, you know, dinner is ready. You know, lunch is ready. You know, come on down and eat. He's not done. And I've said to him, you know, we're here because this is what God has ordained. This is what, what God has, has for us. I know without a doubt that he balances me out. I'm hyper, I'm spontaneous, but he gives me focus. He gives me drive. He slows me down. He helps me to understand the plan. For, for Michael, I help him because I, in many cases, as he said, I give him uh, the boost, the extra, like, look, you can do this. You've got it. He's And I'm the educator. I'm the one who teaches, but he teaches our children. When we have issues a lot of time, I'm the one who's going to speak up because I just can't hold my tongue. <laughs> so, you know, he it's just amazing how God works this out. So after 20 years, we now realize that this is not us. This is God. And this is what right. God has for us. So the commonality, I'm just seeing the commonality. There's a common thread between all of the couples and, and I'm just going to add us in there because we're going to try to get, we're going to get past the 2025, 20, 23rd, you know, all them years y'all got over here. But the common thread is, is not about what, what I said at the beginning. It's not about compromise. It's about choice. And I think, uh, Terrence, you said that it's about choice. It's about choice, what you're choosing to do. And I know Khalid counsels a many uh, couple, amen couple and I know Dr. Sherilyn does the same with children and and couples and all that what y'all got some takeaways so I'm just going yeah y'all go ahead <laughs> y'all go ahead Khalid you 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 muted did did Sherilyn did she did Dr. Sherilyn muted you go ahead doc I'll let you go first <laughs> he lost to me out there so he could save it all up for the uh, for later but um in my 28 years of uh this is about to be 28 years I don't know lord it wasn't up to God <laughs> that got us here because this is about to be 28 years and and May will be 30 years of us knowing each other and being together when I met him and he met me we looked at each other and we were like ew the first time <laughs> And I walked out of the room and I said to my friend who introduced us, I was like, what are you thinking? This man is a true nerd. I am not a nerd. I was like, oh my God, what were you thinking? We don't, we don't compliment each other. Oh my God. And so we walked away from that meeting and I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to be by myself, Lord. No, I was only 22. What did I know? So when we met again, uh, months later, it was a whole different vibe. We talked um, a lot and he came down. He watched me from the third floor. He will tell you this. We were, I was in a pool with my girlfriend and he came downstairs and he had this towel over his shoulder and he came in and he was like, would you like to swim with me? And I was like, well, yes. So it was a whole different feel. And he came into the pool and we talked for hours. And my girlfriends are sitting back looking like, he didn't choose me. I was like, not this time. So we talked and we talked and we talked. And when I left the pool, I called my mother and I said, I met my husband. Wow. And I, for so whatever cool. reason, I knew. <laughs> We were the polar opposite and still are the polar opposite of each other. Um, I laughed when uh, the Browns told their story about travel because this man had a whole itinerary for our honeymoon. And it included everything, <laughs> everything that he wanted to do. And I'm looking like, I mean, bathroom breaks were scheduled, all kinds. I was like, I can't travel with you. Oh, wow. I I, I wasn't that bad. He was he was horrible. I was like, <laughs> I was like, no, because my 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 family is free flowing. So we're gonna go. We're gonna do our thing. Hey, if we feel like doing this, that's vacation to me. That's what I grew up with. He had to have a whole itinerary. I mean, for every day that we were there, he typed it out and he handed it to me. I wow. said, okay, Lord, if you want me to stay married to this man, I'm going to need a sign and I'm going to I need you to understand that this is not going to work for me. I, can, I can't do this. So we, we have decided 
traveling together. We have some some fun. We do it my way sometimes. And sometimes we have to do it his way. That's how we've kept it going. Also, the non-traditional role works for us. I'm not the person that is going to do every single thing. I can't. I'm very, very busy. He has a more relaxed schedule. So we flip-flop when we had a son. Our son, he helped a lot more with taking him places, um, you know, taking him to football practice. He couldn't make the games. I made the games. Um, just different different things. And so we that worked for us. And so I'm a lot like you guys. And so in my notes, as, as you guys were talking, he had to accept my flaws. I definitely am not a morning person. He is a morning person. I was like, bro, what you don't do is talk to me first thing in the morning. If you want to survive, don't do it. So he had, I am not a morning person. So he comes in and he wants to talk to me. He comes in with coffee and he lets me have my coffee before he talks to me. Because other than that, he's going to get up. So he understands, don't do that. If you want to stay married, don't do that. Because I can't, I cannot hear anything that you're saying until <laughs> I have some coffee. I don't, don't do that. So he had to accept the flaws. There's some other things and I see you guys' faces because it must not be just me. I thought it was just me. But oh, I yeah. had to, <laughs> she said, uh-uh. He had to understand that. So finally, finally, at 30 years, he gets don't he's like I'm not supposed to talk to you first thing in the morning. All right, right. But, but, but then, there is a flip side. Right. I'm still kind of trying to get Kim to realize, don't talk to me at a certain time at night because at right. that point I'm checked out. Exactly. And I know I've got more to do in the morning, and she'll be uh, at 11:30, 12 o'clock at night. She's like going 100 miles an hour, and I may look up and she's just going to bed, and it's what three three thirty mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and morning duty starts at six six thirty in the morning mm -hmm. and at six six thirty in the morning i mean she's not that mm -hmm. it's, it's, it <laughs> sounds very to me i, 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 I yeah. joke with all the time I'm like yeah you're kind of, right, you're kind of like a vampire <laughs> as soon as the sun goes up that's when you get in your coffin and close it up and <laughs> <laughs> Sounds familiar. Sounds very Sounds much familiar. familiar. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I just keep hearing though we have to do what works for us. I keep hearing that uh, the other piece of it is learning your partner and the communication that you two have is the most important thing to have. I keep hearing um, know your lane. <laughs> I knew yeah. what my lane was. I, I'm the cook. He does the dishes. Um, we we knew our lanes and it, we had to grow to that. Um, 30 years later, I'm like, it's been a difference. We got tested immediately. I'm like, okay, God, this is going to 20, I was 22, he was 27. Um, and I'm a little girl, I was a girl from a farm. He was from the big city of Chicago. I grew up in Texas. Total polar, op I mean, just opposite. And he, we got our nephew to raise in December. We got married October 1st, which would have been my great grandfather's 100th birthday. December 25th, we got a 15 year old to raise. Oh my As God. newlyweds. As newlyweds. Oh wow. they, you, you want to talk about having to have some God and this was one that was gang banging and clowning and cut and I hope he's watching he got all this gray hair right here it was because of him but we survived it it tested every bit of what we had and he was getting a doctorate at the time and it was ridiculous The all of the time that he had to spend away so I was working on my master's at the time and I'm raising a 15 year old. Mind you, I'm only seven years older than my the 15 year old nephew. And so it took a lot. I'm like, you better come get him because he doesn't realize who he's talking to. You better come do, you know, so we had to work through that. We became instant parents. And right. so that was a lot. And so it tested us early on. God was the only way we made it through. And so learned a lot about each other during that time period. And then we were blessed with our own child in 2000, and, um, in 2000. And so I had had some experiences with the, the nephew that helped me to uh, manage and, and raise our child. And so it, um, it, was, it was beneficial, but learned a lot about each other, learned our love languages and all those things. So I hear all of what you guys are 
fan and love those stories uh, because it's familiar to me as well. Okay. You're in the midst of all of that serious conversation. This one, this this one right here. I am, I am so handsome. He's he's <laughs> looking at him, his reflection. What? Khalid, <laughs> just, Help us, bro, pray. this is what I'm <laughs> dealing with. Okay, can you all add back to your list, Terrence? This is your bro. George, this is your bro. <laughs> Pass the field. <laughs> you know, Michael. Well, you Welcome know, to I'm TV, saying. Gene. Welcome to TV. You look good, man. Yeah, man. And Khalid going to be the last one? Oh, gosh. Go ahead, Khalid. Got him. <laughs> wow. 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 Um, I purposely needed to be last. Okay. And I'm going to explain why. And, and, and I have a couple of talking points. But let me throw this out. This has been a beautiful experience. I um, do private um, practice and the majority of my clients um, since I started really a year ago have been damaged and miserable married people. And so, and then I have 10 friends, now 12 friends who are now going through divorce. And I'm divorced. And I wasn't looking forward to this forum mm. being the only single person because you feel like a misfit, right? But you're not. I failed. All of you men, you passed the test. I failed. You know, man didn't stay with me. So it's like, how can I sit here for 90 minutes? and listen to all these Disney movie stories and not feel something. But I said, no, Khalid, mm -hmm. God needed you to sit here and listen. You really need to listen because you hear so much of the negative. Mm -hmm. Now you need to hear the triumphs. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I hear. That's good. Second of all, I was just talking to a young man who called me today out the blue and he is getting married. And it was just tell you how God, the fluidity of God, everything that each one of you all has said, I said to him because he was like, Khalid, my wife, I'm laid back. I'm an introvert, but I'm dating a alpha female a woman with masculine energy. And he was like, Khalid, how do I navigate this? And I said, when a woman has masculine energy, it's because the man or the men in her life have not stepped up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she feels she has to do a dual role, being the man and the woman. Yeah. Now, if you love her and if you're gonna be consistent with her, she'll go right back to her feminine energy. That's true. And it's not gonna happen immediately, mm -mm. but as you show and prove who you are, it'll kick in. Yeah. It'll kick in. That's true. And she'll want to be feminine. Every woman wants to be feminine. I don't know a woman who wants to be masculine. Life makes them that way, okay? Thirdly, um, Again, I needed to hear you all's testimonies. And I heard different versions, different versions. So I didn't get a cookie cutter effect sitting here. I heard people say, we are real couples who have struggled, but we kept God as the third player, the third invisible player. And he's sitting between us right now hugging us, keeping us together. And you know what? Us single people need to hear from you all. I hear all the time married men say, I don't want to be, I, my wife said, I can't be friends with single men because y'all are the devil. But us single men need to hear from married men about, guys, it's, it's, it's the best thing going. You know, it's the best thing going, especially when you find the one. 
And I find it very amazing when all of you all said that, because I always say this, God has the best sense of humor because he always attracts opposites, always. I've Thank never you. met two introverts together. I never met two extroverts together. I've met an introvert and an extrovert. Me, I was the person who was, I'm a military guy, you know? All of this, I'm very structured, very organized. Got to have a plan out. Here go a bowl full of pants and a bunch of notepads right here. Got to lay your wall. Out. And your wall of certificates in the back. Absolutely. Dress right dress. I married Lynn from Girlfriends. <laughs> I married Lynn from Girlfriends. I married Denise Huxtable all over the place, all over the place. And even when we was married, the, the two gifts she gave me was this. She gave me my beautiful daughter. She, she blessed me with my daughter. So I love her for that. And she also taught me about spontaneity because I would have died, guys, the way I was going. So regimented, so anal. She taught me to throw caution to the wind sometimes. Enjoy life. You got one life. And then lastly, I want to say this. Guys, you all made it through this horrific pandemic that has tested every married couple. Man. I know. You made it through and you're going to make it through. So if you think your story isn't important as a divorced man sitting here in your presence, thank you. It is so refreshing. And me, if you, anybody knows me, I don't have anything with interracial love or whatever, but I love seeing my chocolate folks loving each other. Right, black love. Love it. I, I love black love. So thank you all for letting me be in your presence. No, I think, I think you know, just the idea, um, because that's why I love the balance of Khalid and Dr. Garrett. They're coming from different perspectives, but they do provide balanced counseling. And that's what's necessary, balanced counseling. And in that vein, did all of you all receive uh, marital counseling? If you wanna just raise your hand, everybody received marital counseling? So, <laughs> I, I, like, I, like I, hey, I like to eat my noodles out of a pot. She wants to know. <laughs> Don't play the things that yeah. I don't think are important. <laughs> Dino likes to stand up and eat. I'm like, would you please sit down? Sit you we have chairs. Sit. No, he likes to stand up and walk around and eat. I don't understand that concept. Yeah. So marriage counseling. Exactly. Marital counseling was essential. Um, I'm going to give could, you a quote. Go ahead, Terrence. You want to if say? If I could add uh, just this little note to anybody that's watching, um, if you're going to do any kind of counseling, marriage counseling, personal counseling, therapy, what have you, counseling is only as good as you're honest. Wow. Right. Thank you. And so if you front wow. in your marital counseling, you can't be surprised when stuff show up. You just can't be surprised. Right. So it's only as good as you're honest. So, you know, I advise it wholeheartedly, um, but it's only as good as you're honest. And I, I also advise tune-ups. <laughs> we had premarital counseling. And then of course we do a lot of, well, we used to do a lot of marriage retreats before COVID. Anything that we could do to just to keep it fresh, and and just to keep you know checking in so for those who are listening you know marriage is ongoing and you're constantly growing and you have to continue to grow together and you have different needs at different times yeah. and a lot of times because you have children and we both have had a lot of loss our parents when we married our parents were living and we're 20 almost 24 years in and now we don't have any parents so we've had a lot of sickness and transition. We have a son that has epilepsy. We've had uh, to go through that with him. He's 13. We spent probably what, five years in and out of hospitals. Um, I think there, the there was one year, every month for like 11 months, we, we, he was either in the hospital or we went to ER or both. Yeah, you all were, even went out of town with him, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, we, we've uh, been the specialty just hospital trying to figure it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. your life is going to constantly change. You right. have to be prepared for that. And God will give you what you need if you go to him. Right. And, and speaking of, you know, love and loss, um, within a month, a month and a half of our marriage, we got married in September and like his best friend, which was also his cousin, mm. passed away. She actually was in the hospital on the day of our wedding and she promised them that if she let if they let her out to come to the wedding, that she would come back and sign herself back in. And she did that. She signed herself out came to the wedding and then went back to the hospital but she passed away like a month and a half after that and he grieved himself into like flu-like symptoms Mm. i mean like fever you know nauseous the whole thing and his i didn't know what to do with that first of all i i didn't grow up in a house of men who period right then I didn't grow up around men who grieved mm. outwardly. Um, I would get in my car and cry myself to work because I didn't know what to do for mm. him to make him feel better. Mm. You know, he's calling, you know, he would call her voicemail to hear her voice. This was his best friend, you know, um, although cousins, but they were best friends. And his yeah, his sister. And so when you talk about grief and loss, you know, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just life happens and mm-hmm. how you respond to it is what the essential part. Can someone talk about that? You know, how, and mm-hmm. I think Khalid, you, you are speaking to um, what has happened with this pandemic. The pandemic happened, people, nobody was prepared for any of their responses because this has never happened to anybody's lifetime, right? right? That's living. So we don't know how to react to it. And then you have this person that now you don't have work. You don't have outside events. You don't have a way of escape, so to speak. You know, it's, you know, one bedroom house, you know, or one bedroom apartment. Where do you go? I'm still looking at you. (laughs) You know, what do you do? Um, and, and I, I would commend anybody who has survived this pandemic, but we have in the media, right? We have all these different couples. And I just, um, uh, saw, um, what was it? An article about, um, Coral, Cora Jakes, Robert, I mean, what's her Cora Jakes? I can't think of her married last name, but now they've put out that they're getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, um, T.D. Jakes, the oldest, the oldest daughter, I believe she is. Is she, the one, is she the one that's a minister? I No, no, no. You're thinking of Sarah Jakes. It's okay. uh, Cor- Cora Jakes Coleman. Coleman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the proper last name. Thank you for that. And they've just put out that they're getting divorced and it's a private affair and, you know, just give them peace and give them time to adjust. But you have all these different couples that people look to because the grass is always green on that picture, right? Can we talk about that? That grass being green and what you thought, Pastor Phil and and Lady Vondra or or George and Tanya, any thoughts? When when you say that love to me is different for everybody, I don't think everybody grew up with it the same way. In in my household, I, I never saw the violence. There was nine of us. We we didn't have everything, but we lived the Walton life. At least that's what our parents gave us to believe because that's how they kept us covered. That's how they kept us sheltered. So there were a lot of things that we didn't know, but like I said, love is different. Some people figure material things. That's the love they look for. So I I say with, with that, Everybody looks for it in a different way, but if we could actually figure out what it is that they're looking for in that love, because like I said, it comes different in every house. Mm -hmm. It Mm -hmm. looks different. Mm -hmm. So we do have to pay attention to who we're around and and, and you notice these things, how each person is loved. And I believe that part too is sometimes as you all say, a gift. 
because God will give you that. So when you come around that person, you have that certain thing about them and you begin to, you know me, express a different type, speak to them on their own level and you don't even know it, but it's a different love and he brings it out and he shows you when yeah. that time comes. Yeah, and many times, it, it, like you said, it starts in our childhood um, mm. at home. Um, and and just to, to add this, um, when you anybody when you when you get married, sometimes you have to pull out some of the junk that's been there um, that was rooted from your childhood. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know I had a lot of things, you know, in my life that George had to deal with. <laughs> a lot of. Uh, things depression um that he had he helped me through so i thank god for that but there's a lot of things and junk that we that um married couples have to deal with and sometimes it starts in the childhood um and it has to be uprooted so um, i'm sure the therapist would definitely agree with that yeah. lady tauber and um oh. pastor bill oh, okay <laughs> i want to i kind of want to go back a little bit when you talked about the um counseling Mm. And we always tell people when we counsel them is you have to lay it all on the line. Yeah. Like as he said, honest. you gotta lay it all on the line. Mm -hmm. Once they lay it all on the line, we know how we can what we can deal with, even if it means counseling uh, the woman and counseling the man separate and having prayer and deliverance, you know, and bringing them back together and, and get understanding. There's a lot of things that we take, you know, uh, our couples through before the marriage. But there have been maybe two or three couples that we did counsel. And I know one that we counseled and we told me they wasn't ready. And wow. they ended up waiting, I think, uh, maybe three yeah. months. Yeah, it was a few months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we just told them they wasn't ready yet. And we explained to them why they wasn't ready and what they needed to do mm -hmm. to prepare themselves to get ready. Mm -hmm. And um, they took our advice. And then we came back and, you know, later on, maybe about six months or a year yeah, about later, six months, yeah. they mm -hmm. did get married. And mm -hmm. so now they're still married. But one of the things we tell them is during the marriage process, uh, we're still here for you. And that's most important. After you're married. After yeah. you're married. You're you married. got those those beginning years and what, what some call a seven year itch that if you make it past seven years, you know, I don't believe in none of that. <laughs> I just believe that having God and people there that can support you. And when you go through some, and we've had a couple of couples call us and say, wives mainly, they say, this is what's going on. <laughs> this is what he's doing. And, you know, and before I allow that, I have to say, well, what are you doing? You know, so right. the counseling is, is, is very important. I think in our marriage, we were counseled, but didn't really know we were being counseled. We had a, a couple, Larry and Linda McKinney, uh, would bring yeah. us to the table, and, friends, yeah. and they just opened the Bible and just tell us about the scriptures as relate, related mm -hmm. to marriage and how a husband should be, how a wife should be. And then we just kind of watched their lives, and they brought mm -hmm. us a table and had us pray together. And you know, and I say to that to that day because of that, mm -hmm. I know that that was counseling for us. But we learned to, you know, counsel others. During this COVID, I realized that there are a lot of uh, couples that have divorced. And one of the things that it seemed like it was on the table was they couldn't stand to be around each other. Yeah. Right. And I was like, how could that be? I mean, I thought about it. You know, the wife is off to work. The husband is off to work all day. Then they come home at night and they away from each other. So... You know, I have to kind of think about it because um, I'm like, how could that be? You know, I'm thinking, but the communication is so much, so important during the marriage. If you don't communicate and you don't talk to one another and you don't tell how you're really feeling about whatever it is you're going through, the communication would do nothing. This communication would do nothing but build a wall. True. So that communication is the most important key. I say that's the foundation to any marriage. If you can't communi communicate with one another, right, that's, right, that's the relationship. That that's that's so important. Is the communication, being open and talking. Say what you mean, and if you don't mean it, don't say it. Ooh, did, did y'all get that nugget? I add it to my paper. Here. <laughs> No, because it's funny we, that you said that because I know Khalid has said on some other shows that it's usually the wife, Khalid, that calls you. Yes. 
and and the guy is coming the husband is coming but reluctantly right Khalid yes. um, it's interesting that that is actually what's still happening um Lady Vondria yeah that the wife is the one that's initiating because usually the wife wants the guy to be fixed the husband to be fixed and they come into Khalid, fix him. They come and talk about the, the what the dad can do. But I'm like, so right, what right. are you doing? And, you know, and I, and I learned that from my own experience. What are you doing? Well, what right. my wife right. did, what my wife did with me was she would always say, Well, if you're not going to do what you need to do, then I'm going to talk to your boss. And that meant that's going to talk to God. And the last thing I wanted my wife to do was talk to the Lord about me because I knew the next person was going to get got on was going to be me by the Lord. And so that said, we're going to tighten up and do what we need to do and make sure we're communicating. But you all said a couple of couple power, quick, powerful things. I just want to circle back quickly. She shared greatly on, on communication. I just want to circle back real quick on the whole celebrity marriage thing. And those who are in positions, we have people who are on the lines, our, our, our folks are sharing tonight that are in the legal field and different other areas of professionalism, that sort of thing. It's important to know that when you come home, those titles and their status have to come off. And sometimes mm. that, 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 you know, well, in the, in the like you said, in, in the outset, yeah, not, ministry. Ministry, 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 I'm the pastor, you know, but are you the pastor at home? She calls me pastor. She <laughs> does, but I don't act like I'm the pastor at home. I'm her husband. You know, I, I call him pastor and sometimes <laughs> I say, babe, and sometimes I say, huh, it depends. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> it has a different yeah. connotation yeah. depending on the situation. Yeah. Keep, Keena, we got this running joke. You know, the Bible says, that's the little Bible that, the Bible says that uh, Sarah honored her husband Abraham oh, and called him Lord. Lord. <laughs> oh, goodness, that's right. With pastor, you should be. <laughs> look, at, brother, look at brother Mike. Brother Mike was that. He, that's the most I've seen him move the whole, the whole time we in the zoo. Brother, brother Mike, you hear what I said? Oh, no. Look at brother Mike. I him. will I'm not be able to live this down. <laughs> I'm praying for you, Kim. I'm praying for you. <laughs> it's just a word, it's a word of honor. It just, it, but it is. It's, it's not, it's not slavery it. and the whole thing with submission. No. We look at that real quick. We look at that thing with submission. The Bible says, "Why well, I submit yourself to the husband, you know, and that sort of thing. But the next verse we don't read, it says, husband and wife submit to one another. One another. Yeah. So one it's another. the right being shared it's submission honor. together and the honor together. Yeah. The scripture says we're heirs together of the grace of life. So we're both together should be enjoying all of these wonderful things that we're experiencing together and not somebody who, yeah, you have a husband that's ahead, he's going to do his responsibilities. But at the end of the day, we're, we're functioning together in marriage. A couple of quick celebrity, like you mentioned, I didn't, hadn't heard about Sister Jakes, but certainly probably one's been in the news real quick is the one about uh, uh, what's the young lady, Megan Good and her husband. Yeah, Pastor yeah. Good. And that marriage, again, we look to those marriages we, we aspire and we see the celebrity and oh, this is great too. Incredibly successful people who are together in marriage. But those when you go home, if those titles are still there, struggles are still there, what I want to be, yeah. those are the things that put a strain and an a, a, a tension on a marriage. And so those things have to come off. And it has right. to be communicated that when we come together, okay, you're a lawyer in the in the world, you know, right. my wife is an uh, is administrator, I'm a pastor, that sort of thing. So when we come home, those things come off. We are just yeah. two people who love one another. We function and we live together. We communicate. We yeah. talk about everything. We do talk about, and that's an yeah. important thing. That that if there's a nugget I can leave tonight is we have learned over the years to talk about everything. My wife, real I quick, think, y'all. I, I think real, I pulled that real, out of y'all. Real quick, <laughs> my wife. When my wife, still beautiful after all these years, she went to the store one day, Kena. Probably about three, about our this, third year married. This was a, and when she went to the store. She says some man came up to her and asked her, said, look at that, so you look good. You know, he got his Mac on, you look good, baby. He said, are you married? She says, yes. yes. He says, are you happily married? Um, when it was, yeah, 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 it was okay. a while ago. Well, that's still the so, phrase. I mean, he tells, he's not just, he's talking about, I'm testing the water. Are you happily married? Yes, that's, still, that's to, still a come on line said, now. Don't, don't, don't nobody look at me. I'm like, trust me. People are looking at you. They, they are. That that said, you know, people are, are attracted and they're trying to pull that sort of thing. Pull but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta know where your bread is buttered. You gotta know where your grass is water. You at home? Yeah, you're beautiful. Like double people. down where the bread is you know, we but all that, see beautiful people. But that right? wasn't the whole one. of it. The thing of it is he came, he was asking me all these questions. He's like, are you happily married? And I'm like, yes. And he was following me around the store. And 
asking me, he said, you have kids? Oh, I'm yeah. like, yes. And he was, he was just, you know, doing all yeah. this. So when I got home, I told my husband about this man that was following <laughs> me around the store. But I was like, but you know what, babe? He was following me around the store and uh, he was asking me all these questions. And it's in the midst of those times when we may be having misunderstandings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's when following me around the store and asking me all these questions. And I come home and I tell my husband, babe, he was good looking. He said, what? <laughs> I said he was good looking. He wasn't bad on the eyes. He wasn't I bad. Said, and uh, he was tall like you. He's like, what? I said, yeah, that's how the enemy is, you know, he was tall just like you. Um, and I said, uh, and he had on this bad coat. Oh my God, this coat was sharp. It was this, and I'm describing the coat, and I'm telling them all about this coat. And no, I just didn't. And me as his wife, like, why is she telling me all this? I needed to tell him because I had these thoughts out in my mind. He was good looking. He was tall. It looked like he had some money. But we was having a little misunderstanding over here. But I had to, as we said in the beginning, make this choice. I wasn't going to allow that to pull me away. So I said to my husband, and you know what? That coat was so sharp. I'm going to get you one of those coats one day. <laughs> I just want to thank you so much for that. I just wanted to welcome uh Terrence and Regina's up there but Regina came on into the room I know she had had to work a little late thank you uh Regina for coming on into the conversation <laughs> in the midst of the foolery <laughs> of talking about Lord ain't nobody gonna be calling nobody Lord let me just let the record you know the Bible says no, <laughs> he was going with the Bible <laughs> But still got them single woman ways. You know what? See, we ain't gonna start no fights. We ain't gonna start no fights. But it was so funny that you talked about, Pastor Phil, you talked about um us submitting to one another. And one of the sections in my book at the end, I went through the married couples of the Bible, good, bad, and different. All the married couples that I could find. Now, if I miss some, I'm sorry. But there is more scripture about us being brother and sister than there is about us being husband and wife. Why? Because they don't stop being my brother. He doesn't stop being my brother in a marriage, in a covenant. I don't stop being his sister in the kingdom in a marriage covenant, right? And so I love my neighbor as myself. That means him too. And I think sometimes in covenant relationships and in, in marriage, we forget that, you know, Big G is my brother. Kena, I'm, I'm his sister. And so I pulled out those married couples, good, bad, and indifferent. I'm your wife. <laughs> but I pulled out those married couples because no matter if it was good or bad scripturally, there is a nugget to be learned from that. There's a nugget to, to pull from that and say, that's not what we want to do. Or that's what we want to emulate, right? And so that was so good, um, Pastor Phil, that you pointed that out. That reminded me that that is a section. And that was impressed upon me as I went through the different phases of my life. What kind of covenant did I want? Because I didn't grow up under covenant. I grew up under a single mom. I didn't, I didn't grow up in, in a married household. I didn't have it role modeled in front of me. I could only see things at church from afar, right? Or if I went to my pastor's house and I could see how they interacted, right? If they went in the kitchen and closed the door, they about to have a serious conversation. That's what you do when you're married. You go in the kitchen, close the door and send the children away. You know, things like that. You know, I'm picking up all those things. And so, you know, as a single person, did all of you all create, um, we're going to bring Regina right on in this conversation. Did all of you all create like the image you leave in Khalid? Gotta go. Love Be you. blessed, everyone. Thank you Love all. You. Love you. Did all of you all create something in your mind of what you thought it was supposed to be? And how different, <laughs> how different was it really <laughs> when you got in it? Regina, you want to chime in? You funny. You know I love you. <laughs> oh. I, I would say yes. I said, um, I think as young kids growing up and you see, you have this observation of the people who are around you, who you uh, admire uh, in marriage and you think, oh, 
your marriage is going to be just like theirs, right? Because you don't see the hard work that goes on behind the scene, so to speak, right? Um, and so like, I, I'll give an example of my grandparents, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, uh, Kina, big mom, big daddy, you know, you know how they act, you know how they interacted. We saw them fuss, we saw them laugh, we saw them, you know, but I don't know what happened when they closed the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I have my grandmother's wisdom, you know, when it comes to marriage. And, you know, the one thing that she would tell me, even if she didn't say anything else about it, she said, she would say, baby, everybody needs a helping hand. You got to have a little grace. She said, so just sit down, be quiet and just be there. You know, she would just do things like that that very seems very simple but very hard to do in a marriage so it's hard to sit there be quiet have some grace listen even today and we've been married for 22 years and it's still it's still the same thing the same the same thing still happens because the environment that we live in comes at you. You know, there are things that come at you all the time and you still gotta sit there, be quiet and listen, right? Um, and try to hear the other, other side of the story because it's not just yours and what you, you are seeing and what you're hearing, what you're observing, but it's also what they're going through. Um, and you want your needs to be met first. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think that's why I think God gives us people whom we can admire to see the different pictures, the different scenes, but, but what's going on behind the scene, you still don't know. Right. Um, and I think that that's the learning part, but I think you have to learn it in your own marriage because we are not them, right? We don't have the same experiences of the people whom we admire. And so we got to figure it out. Right, right. And that's, that's, that's a good segue. That's a good segue point. Well, I mean, this has been some deep nugget conversation. I'm going to go down these nuggets because I want everybody, everybody in faith. You know what? This one over here talking about you listening. You need to <laughs> Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. Oh, Gina, you, well, my, my girl now. now. <laughs> you, you, thank you, Regina. Somebody help me. Regina, please. you know your girl. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I, I, anywho, anywho. Huh? Go ahead, Kim. Did you want to say something before I go down the list? Yes. yes, I just wanted to say something about marriage. Um, as I stated that my mom and dad were married for uh, 30, 30, I think it was almost 30 years before my, my father passed away. And Michael's parents were married about 30, about 30 years before he passed away. Um, and my parents deal with conflict very differently. As we grew up, my parents, if they had an argument, we didn't go to the room. You know, they just had that argument in front of us. And it was like, we, it's a disagreement where, you know, we're going to fuss. But it was, you know, it was never something we were afraid of or, you know, I felt like caused any trauma. You know, it was just mom and dad are disagreeing. And at the end of, you know, my dad would be like, well, baby, that's just the way it is. You know, and it was never to destroy her self-image. It was never for him, for her to destroy his self-image. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I now, I didn't realize then growing up that there was really a lot of unhealthy conflict in black families because I did not see that. But it wasn't until I got to college when I was starting to like really interact with other uh, people that had you know, families and they would talk about their families and the dynamics that went on. So, you know, I get married, I have conflict with my Michael and I, you know, I say what I want to say. And he's looking at me like, I can't believe you're having this disagreement in front of our daughter. And I'm like, well, well, what's wrong with this? And even when we were married, when we would go to our house, my parents' house, if they had a disagreement, they would have it in front of him. And it was no big deal. And he would get so uncomfortable, he would go in the room. He was like, do you know your parents are arguing in front of me? I was like, yeah, it's no big deal. They'll be fine. They'll be over it in five minutes. 
And you know, it would be like, didn't I tell you to bring biscuits from the grocery store? You always forgetting stuff. You need to write stuff down, you know? And it was, and he was like, they just really had a little argument, a little spat in front of me. But for them, it wasn't really conflict. And so we had to learn how to manage that in our own family, um, as well as this whole issue being from the South of preparing the plate. The woman prepares the plate for the man. Oh, good Lord. And then she eats. When I was a young girl, I asked my granny about that. I'm like, granny, I noticed that we always prepare the plate for the men. Do I have to do that when I get grown? <laughs> And she was like, well, yeah, baby, you know, we kind of do that because that's just kind of what you're supposed to do. Are you sure? She's like, well, you don't really have to. It's not mandated, but that's kind of what we, we do. It's Yes, it's, it's a custom. So I don't necessarily have to do this when I get married. So the first thing I told Michael, I'm not preparing your plate because I don't want my food cold. I want hot food. Which, and, which, which worked out perfectly because I grew up in a household my mom didn't fix our plates. I mean, she fixed the meal, you get your, you get your food. So it worked out perfect. But as time went on, what am I doing? I prepare his plate every time we cook. Every time I, I, when I do cook, I'm preparing his plate and passing it to him. Right. So right. it's something, a, some things does, do come out of us. Um, the things that we thought would not, we would not do, we do, you know, um, is that Paul that says that, the things that I, <laughs> I'm going, I'm teasing Pastor Phil because he went scripture on us about the Lord. It's not happening. Okay, so. <laughs> and it's also a way of showing love, and, and I realize that. It is, it is, but it's out of love that you do things. And, and I mm -hmm. think that's what's key. You don't do it out of tradition. You don't do it because they did it. You don't do it because it looks good. And that's the facades. I think that Pastor Phil, you were talking about all these facades. I'm, I'm attorney. I'm doctor. At the end of the day, I'm Kina. I'm in the house. This big G. We, we together. You know, that's George and Tanya. That's Regina and Terrence, right? Absolutely. That's Phil and Vondra. You know, Mike and Kim. You know, that's, you know, that's what, who we are. And, and in your house, you should be able to take all that world stuff off that the world requires of you and to be genuinely who you are. If you can't be safe in your own house, where can you be safe? Yeah, let the baby out. He gonna fuss until he gets it gets out. But I wanted to go down these nuggets. We're right at 909. Let me tell you all, you all drop some nuggets. And for anyone that's watching, if you all didn't catch these nuggets, Kina called them for you, okay? So just, just get your pen out. It's about, it's so many, but I'm just going to go through them real quick. So we got covenant is not covenant until it's what? Tested. Tested. Right? Tested. And then uh, Terrence came up, came up with some data for us, right? 35 to 50,000 choices, Terrence, we make per day. So we choose to be married. We choose to love the spouse that God has put together, uh, put us together with, we choose to make this thing work. We choose the hard work that it takes. And we choose to let go and cut off some things that are not beneficial to our covenant relationship, right? And then counseling is important, right? Communication, I heard communication all day, every day, 24 hours a day, every second of every day. It has to be the essential component to um, a good working covenant to keep that music playing. Um, opposites attract. We've had opposites all over this place. And I'm glad I don't feel like a misfit anymore. Um, accepting the flaws. Everybody got them. Get over yourself. You ain't perfect. And if you don't accept your own flaws, why are you asking somebody else to do it? Get, deal with your junk. Go see Dr. <laughs> Dr. Sherlin, go see um, Mr. Khalid, go find you a therapist and deal with your isms and schisms so that you can come and be one with someone else, right? Um, learning how to communicate with each other is important. Everybody doesn't communicate the same way. And don't expect, and as a tagline, don't expect someone to be how you want them to communicate, how you want them to be. Let them evolve right? We, we're growing together. 
um, I believe it was Dion Cole. He's a uh, he's a um, a comedian, but he said something very interesting that sometimes people get married at a level that they're moving on to, but you married that person at a level that they're willing to stay at. So when you evolve up, they still there, and you like come on, no, this is this is who I am. So being honest, I, I heard that being honest about who you are. At the, at the onset, be honest. Be honest with yourself. Don't be the Ishmael. We talked about Ishmael, right, Dr. Sherilyn, before? Ishmael can never be Isaac. Ishmael can only be Ishmael. He will try, 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 try to be Isaac, but he will never be Isaac. So it's essential to be true to who you are. Um, counseling tune-ups, nothing wrong with going on a marriage retreat, keep it fresh and sassy. Or, um, or planning. Michael, planning the event, right? What we're gonna do? I don't know about bathroom breaks, Shirley, but, <laughs> but that's plan. why we travel separately. <laughs> but plan. I'm the planner. Gino is not. You know, he's just not. I got to know what we're doing. I got to pay for it in advance, right? Um, listen to me. Uh, mean what you say. This is uh, Lady Vondria. Mean what you say, and if you don't don't mean it then don't say it just don't say it mean what you say titles come off and we talked about that titles come off when you hit that door titles come off the respect and love evolves and grow but it's not because of a title it's not because of a position if if we're going to talk about position it's because you have my heart and i have yours and god has mended us together that should be enough respect and love in that. And if you need a title, title that. But that other stuff, leave it at the door. Um, submit and honor one another. That's the other scripture <laughs> that we forget about. And not to mention, we are brother and sister in Christ. And that doesn't stop because you said, I do. Talk about everything. Leave nothing, leave nothing to secret. Secrets have a way of coming up and killing a relationship, killing communication, killing trust, right? So talk about everything, even when that man following you around in the store. Come home and tell him about it. <laughs> tell him about it. I tell Gina all the time, somebody slid in my DM. I'm like, hey, look what they had seen. But they complimented you, you know? It's funny to me, but he like, uh-huh. If he out of there, you know, <laughs> you know, he's a 21 gun salute, salute just for all you know. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're going to leave that right there. Know which side your bread is buttered on. Y'all know I had to get that one in. And then just sum it all up. Give each other grace. Give each other grace to evolve, to make mistakes. I think that was uh, one of the quotes from one of our couples to make mistakes. Give e each other grace. Amen. So this has been awesome for me. I, I got my nuggets. Look, look, I wasn't playing with y'all when I said I was going to be writing them down. I wasn't playing. He over here making jokes like, you listening? Be quiet. Did you listen? Lord. Ain't nobody got time for all that. But anyway, I want <laughs> I want to thank Khalid. He had to go. But Khalid, you are not a misfit. I, I'm so happy you came and joined us because you did have something co to contribute and something to share with your couples, right? And Dr. Cheryl and Garrett, you know, you, you so awesome. Pulling them nuggets from you too. I don't know about planning the bathroom breaks, but <laughs> that is good. But to George and Tanya Wormley, Terrence and Regina, Pastor Phil and Lady Vondria, and Michael and Kim, thank you so, so much for partaking in this. I think this was awesome. Definitely a replay, a replay, and another replay. There was so much that I didn't write down that I'm going to have to listen to again. Not just so my own edification, but when people ask me questions that maybe I'm not living up to par, I can still refer to that it still works this way. You know, I'm working on it, but here's a nugget that you can work on too, right? None of us are perfect. We're not giving you a Disney story here a happily ever after, but just as one of the songs said, just a couple of forevers, just, just a couple, just a couple of forevers. And then as, as my favorite song by Regina Bell, after the glitter is gone, 
will still be lovers. After all the shine is gone, the ring is tarnished, all of that, we're still in this together. We're still in this together. So bless you all. Bless you, Facebook. Thank you so much for being a part. And we're going to be talking about um, what's love got to do with it for February. Oh, yes. We're going to talk about We're going to talk about those Facebook pictures of in your pajamas and you all lovey-dovey with your family. And then two days later, you asking for a divorce. We're going to talk about it. Yes, yes, ma'am. And yes, sir. Um, talk about agape, uh, philios, and what's the other one? I always forget it. Uh, eros. We're going to talk Ooh. about the three loves, right? We're going to talk about those on our next time, which is February 22nd. So we'll be back here at our regular time at eight o'clock. But I wanted to give us time to really delve in deep. And you guys have been amazing. Amazing. I'm so excited. I'm geeked. Yay. You got Pastor Phil, we're waiting for your retreat. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <Yep. laughs> we're waiting Amen. to come there for your retreat. Yeah, they live up the road in Kentucky, so, you know, they <laughs> want to come it, on any, up. Any, any excuse to come to Chicago, I'm all in. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it together, y'all, for sure. All right. It'll be amazing. It'll be amazing. Yeah. Anything, love? Yeah. Now, this is just awesome time. Yeah. So we thank God for all of you all. Got some real good um, info, real good advice. So it's real good, mm -hmm. real good. Yeah, but I won't be calling him Lord. Amen. So we gonna say good night. <laughs> I was just about to say you can give it up if you gotta call him Lord. And I'm glad my hey. husband's in here because I'm Lord, sure he's mad too. Baby, I'm gonna have the the single L on my head. This is what I'm doing. But the single, no, don't hold do on to that, fellas. Don't let that go. Now hold on to that. Now. I, hate the one. <laughs> I changed my mind. <laughs> changed my mind. Scratch that. <laughs> thank you. Thank is that you. gonna be the name of the conference? <laughs> Call me Lord. That's gonna be <laughs> settles everything. Don't give, don't, don't give him any ideas because I think I'm gonna have to make an appearance at that conference. I'm, I'm hoping that my husband can hear that. Come on, Dr. Shirley, we need that wisdom. Come on. Wait, pass uh, out. We're gonna be there to pass out cards and have a room next door. Like now, when when this come on over here, right, come, on, come, here, come right. on over here and make an appointment. Exactly. <laughs> well, bless you all. Thank you. We're going to sign off. I want the couples to stay on. I'm just going to close us out of Facebook. Bye, Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you, Taurus. I don't think there were any questions, Taurus, right? I don't know where she went. Okay. No, ma'am. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm going to stop the don't live stream. Thank you, book. Facebook. Don't forget to get the book. Oh, don't yeah, get, get the, the book. book. <laughs> <laughs> always. Love always. You.